Hi, it's Lori, Assistant Director at the Environmental Nature Center, and I'm sitting here today along the trail next to a patch of stinging nettle. Stinging nettle, uh, you know, has a bad reputation for stinging, but um, actually it's such a great plant to have um, in your garden as long as you have it all away from the path. So I am actually planning on doing my next journal page about stinging nettle, and I thought I would take you along on that journey with me. Um, tell you all of the cool things I've learned about it and um, show you my work at the end. I like to journal about native plants because that's what interests me but of course if you're doing a nature journal you can do it on anything, um, plants or animals or rocks even. Um, but when I do my journal and I'm choosing my next plant, of course I like to pick a plant that is native to Orange County where I live. Um, but also I like to try to include one that is, at least the genus, is native to um, the entire country in case I'm traveling and I'd like to know what I'm looking at while I'm hiking. So here's the process that I go through to get, gather the information that I'm going to include on my journal page. After deciding which plant I'm going to write about, I go through like every single native plant book that I have to see what they say the plant's uses are because I'm fascinated by how plants can be used as food and medicine and other ways. So I always look up um, the plant in Early Uses of California Plants by Edward Balls. I also utilize Edible and Useful Plants of California by Charlotte Clark. Uh, my good friend Doug um, wrote a book, Foraging in Southern California, and this book is great because it's not just about the native plants, but other weeds that you might find while you're out hiking about, and you don't have to feel guilty about pulling those and eating them if you're in a public area, but you have to identify them correctly. There's good old Peterson. Here's the guide to Western medicinal plants and herbs, Stephen Foster and Christopher Hobbs. Um, there's I love, love, love the different um, ethnobotany books uh, focusing on different native peoples. Here's Chumash Ethnobotany, Jan Timbrook, Kumaye Ethnobotany by Michael Wilkin Robertson. This is a great book that has fun recipes to use, Living Wild by Alicia Funk and Karen Kaufman. And of course, Probably the first book that I acquired when this stuff um, became interesting to me, Survival Skills of Native California by Paul Campbell. One of my best ways of learning is actually literally learning from other human beings while out and about hiking, I'm going for native plant walks with experts, and um, I always carry my journal with me. Um, this isn't the one that I draw in, this is the one that I just sort of take notes in, but it's still pleasant to look at and it makes me happy. And so I will jot down what I learned from these folks um, in the book and then refer to this as well when I'm deciding what to write about my native plant in my journal. And here are the tools that I use. I love to draw with colored pencils. So I always have a colored pencil kit and an eraser and a pencil sharpener nearby. Uh, that's not to say that I don't use regular pencils to sketch out what I'm going to draw and write beforehand. And here is my journal entry for stinging nettle. Not every journal entry <laughs> has this much information, but there's quite a bit to say about stinging nettle. Um, and I will tell you some of those things while we're looking at the plant in just a moment. A leaf tea brewed with stinging nettle can act as a diuretic and astringent, reduce menstrual flow and nosebleeds, it can stop internal bleeding and chronic diarrhea, eczema, bladder infections, hives, itch, rheumatism, and lung mucus. A leaf poultice helps arthritis and is an anti-inflammatory. Stinging nettle may be an antihistamine and an antiviral. Leaf juice made from the leaves applied to the skin for sores, infections, rashes, and warts, and applied to the scalp for hair loss with or without vinegar. Another cool aspect of stinging nettle is something called urtication, which is when the fresh plant is literally applied directly to the skin to sting it on purpose, and this acts as a counter irritant on joints, muscles, and sciatica, and produces an immune response that relieves symptoms of the original ailment. 
a root preparation relieves urinary difficulties, and an extract has mild blood sugar lowering effects. Stinging nettle is considered a superfood. It is high in vitamin A, C, D, iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and protein. It is better for you than spinach. Young shoots and pale green leaves are excellent simmered in water, served with lemon and butter, added to soups, stews, basically any substitute for spinach. On Thanksgiving, I made a stuffing, and instead of parsley, I added stinging nettle, and no one knew any better. They just left healthier afterwards. Uh, other uses are uh, the stem fibers were used as bowstrings and in basket making. The roots, when boiled, make a yellow dye. And just as a reminder, be sure to gather the leaves before they're flowering, uh, when they're nice and young, early in the spring. Otherwise, they are more difficult for your kidneys to process. I hope you liked learning about stinging nettle and I hope you give it a try next spring when the shoots are young and delicious. Um, I just wanted to share one more resource with you if you are considering journaling, which you should. It was life-changing for me and I have not given it up since I started. Um, this book by uh, John Muir Law's uh, Nature Drawing and Journaling uh, will definitely inspire you to do some journaling and um, it's beautifully written. I certainly haven't read it cover to cover and I don't read most of my nonfiction books cover to cover. I just use them as uh, resources, but certainly the first uh, chapter or two are fun to read to inspire you on your journaling adventure. Good luck. The Environmental Nature Center provides a tremendous service for our community. Free public access to nature, environmental education, and a sanctuary for our community to escape from life's pressures. The ENC depends on income from programs to fund our operations and pay staff. The recent school shutdowns and program cancellations will result in considerable loss of income for the center. Please consider donating. Visit us at encenter.org.